right now that you know how to create a training set the tips and guidelines that you should follow in order to have a training set that ensures maximum possible correct results of your face recognition now we move on to the yield face database uh, that I'm going to be using in my uh, face recognition system and if you're following my tutorial you might want to uh, do this what I'm doing and go download uh, Yale Face Database from their own website. In the previous video, I discussed what they had in their uh, database, what they included, the uh, number of images, and what various uh, you know face expressions and lighting conditions they were uh, capturing. So you just go to uh, the website as given, and then you click the download button, and there will be a zip file that will start downloading. Now, once it is downloaded, you extract it somewhere and in when you extract you can see there are two uh, folders now if you're a Windows user you just open the Yale Faces folder and you can see that uh, in this folder only uh, look at the type of these images now this is a normal image file type and as you can see over here that there is a preview of the face that was added to this in this database that is included in this database uh, and there's another one but if you click the others you can see that there is no preview and the type look at the type of this file it's a sleepy file surprise file wing file I don't think that's even a file type and indeed it is not uh, what they did I don't know which format this file is in and how to read it but uh, in order to have it viewable on your Windows Explorer in a folder you just have to rename it and add an extension for example I like to add the .bmp because I will be using this extension when I'm coding and are you sure to change it yes you change it and there you are now it's viewable in your folder as well so you go and change each of the face uh, if you want if you're going to use all of the faces which I am then I uh, went and changed all their extensions to .bmp and when I finally did the final outcome I saved it in my face collection folder looked something like this now, I've shown this in the previous video and we discussed about how various expressions and light uh, light directions for each person in the database was covered and how many number of persons per database uh, per training set there should be and all the other guidelines that were very useful that will be very useful for you when you're trying to recognize a face so you better I, I really suggest you go and listen to that and watch that video now what's more important here in this video is to use fa Yale face database and to use that there are total as you can see there are 164 items in this whole database and we want to separate it split it into two sets now what are those sets I'll just create them right here there will be a training set as you know that I've been calling so far a faces database and there will be a test set now why do I have to split uh, all these images number of images into two sets because this is not live face recognition I have only uh, 164 images available and from which I have to make a I have to take some samples that I have not been uh, that the system has not been trained on and the other images the remaining images will be the ones that the system will train itself on so that it can then try to recognize an unknown image the unknown images are the set of images we put in the test set so for example I take the first two images of each person and I move them to the test set and similarly randomly taking two images and this now you do this for each person you take two images per person and then you put it in the test set or you can take images of uh, fewer people for example there are I think um, there are 15 individuals uh, for this training set so you could go and take two per a person and that makes 30 images in the training set and then remaining all the remaining you just select them all for example let's just uh, suppose I shifted all that I needed to shift in the test set and then you select all of the images the remaining images and all these remaining images will be your training set 
so you just select them and enter them and copy them into the training set. So now you know that the test set, by the way, this is incomplete. This was just for the purpose of demonstration. You should uh, collect two faces of each person and store them in the test set so that there will be 30 images of the test set and the remaining 134 will remain for the training set. I hope that you've noticed uh, that an image that will be present in the test set, that is the unknown image, unknown faces, will never be present in the training set. Now, intuitively, that means that definitely the uh, system has been trained on some faces and it will try to recognize a face that it has not seen before. So naturally, that means that the training set images and test set images cannot be uh, the same. An image in the training set should not be in the test set and that in the test set should not be in the training set. And that happens naturally when you're trying to implement a live face recognition where all your uh, collected images act as your training set and when your camera captures a live image of a person that image acts as an instance of a test set that is an object from the test set. So you don't have to worry about that when you're doing live, uh, live recognition. You can save as many uh, faces of the, persons, of the persons you're trying to recognize in the training set. But now since we're not doing live recognition, we have a, um, exhaust, we have, we have a limited number of images to test on and to make a test set and a training set from, so I've split it. Now, I just, uh, so that I can demonstrate, these are the final test set and the training set that I had split the Yale Faces database. And this is, as you can see, 134 items. These were the remaining uh, images that the recognizer is supposed to train on, and these were the images I took out as a sample to test on. And as I mentioned, I took two face images per person, so that makes, uh, for 15 individuals, that makes 2 into 15 is equal to 30. I hope that math is pretty simple. And now that our uh, Yale face database has been split into test set and the training set, it is time to finally convert it into a an MS Access database file, which we designed earlier. So next step, we're going to finally fill our MS Access database file with our images in the training set.